हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू स्मार्ट स्टडी गाइड बाय अजय सर दिस इज न्यू सिलेबस एच महाराष्ट्र स्टेट बोर्ड स्टैंडर्ड ट्वेल्व साइंस सब्जेक्ट फिजिक्स लेसन नंबर वन रोटेशनल डायनेमिक्स दिस इज पार्ट वन लेट अस स्टार्ट फर्स्ट पॉइंट what is rotational dynamics the title rotational dynamics contains two terms the first term rotational second term dynamics the term dynamics belongs from one of the branch of physics physics can be classified into several branches such as acoustic classical physics modern physics nuclear physics atomic physics geophysics biophysics mechanics acoustic optics thermodynamics but the term dynamics is belongs to the branch mechanics so therefore the mechanics is the study of motion of an object due to the force acting on it so mechanics is the study of motion of an object due to force acting on it after applying force the body is in the motion so that study is called as mechanics so mechanics is further divided into two branch one that is static and another that is kinetics static means at rest or at steady means study the object which are at rest is called as statistic let us consider the example a book kept on table is at rest there are two forces acting on book the first force the gravitational force acting on a book due to this the force due to the gravitational force which is towards the center of the earth so therefore weight which is equal to mg which acts vertically downward and the second force is the force that table acts on the book in the upward direction to stop it from acceleration so these two forces acting on a book are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so therefore they balance each other and book is at rest or at equilibrium now another branch that is kinetics the study of object which are in motion is called as kinetics so kinetics is further divided into two branch one that is kinetics one that is kinematics and another that is dynamics study of object which are in motion so it's called as kinematics it's called as kinetics and static means study of object which are at rest and which are in motion so therefore those object which are in motion again further divided into two parts that is kinetics which is divided into two parts that is kinematics and dynamics so therefore kinematics is the study of object in the motion without considering the force which is responsible for motion so the motion of an object without considering the force which is responsible for motion is called as kinematics in 8 and 9 standard or in 10 standard so you discuss this 
kinematics concept so there we are not considering the force which is responsible for motion if body is in the motion we are calculating the displacement velocity or acceleration so all these terms we are calculating so these are the examples there we are not considering the force responsible for the motion so another branch that is dynamics is the study of the object in motion with considering the force which is responsible for the motion means here the body is in the motion with considering the force means here we are considering which force is responsible for the motion so then so that force we are considering and that study is called as dynamics for example force or torque momentum energy so these terms we are calculating so this branch is called as dynamics means dynamics we are considering the force which is responsible for the motion so it's called as dynamics the motion and the force so both the concepts we are considering in dynamics so now the second term that is rotational so let us discuss some examples the motion of the blades of the fan motion of spinning top motion of earth so all these three examples if you consider so these objects are rotating about one point or one axis so all these objects they are rotating about a point or about a line so it's called as rotational motion let us consider one more example the wheel which is rotating if you draw a line passing to the center of the wheel and perpendicular to the wheel so that line is called axis of rotation means the wheel which is rotating about an axis of rotation similarly we can consider the another example the rotation of the blades of the fan so if you consider the center point and this rod if you draw a line passing through this point so then this line is also the axis of rotation so therefore axis of rotation is the imaginary line about which whole body is rotating so that imaginary line is called as axis of rotation and that axis of rotation is passing from the center of the sir or center of a body so that line is called as axis of rotation so therefore rotational dynamics is the study of force and the motion about axis of rotation so therefore this study of the forces and the motion about the axis of rotation is called as rotational dynamics now let us start the next point can you recall so there are four questions so these four questions previous standard knowledge based on the previous standard knowledge let us discuss one by one what is circular motion so for this let us discuss one common example the motion of electron around a nucleus so this is the nucleus and electron around the nucleus for form a circular motion so here distance between nucleus and electron is fixed the radius is fixed and the electron which is perform a circular motion this is the circumference of the circle along the circumference of the circle 
so therefore the motion of a particle along the circumference of a circle is called circular motion so motion of any particle along the circumference of a circle then that motion is called as circular motion so here this is the circumference of a circle so next point so can you recall second point that is what is the concept of center of mass so center of mass it is a point at which whole mass of a body is appeared to be concentrated so that point is called as center of mass of that body so center of mass of any body it is a point at which whole mass of a body is concentrate so on that point whole body is balanced on that point it's called as center of mass of that body for example let us discuss this spinning of a basketball on a tip of finger so here this is the tip of the finger and this point is called as center of mass of that ball so this point so where whole mass of a body is concentrate so it's called as center of mass so this is one of the example similarly the rotation or spin spinning of a notebook so at this point the whole notebook or textbook is concentrate the mass which is concentrated at this point so this point is called as center of mass of this book so where whole mass is concentrated so therefore so the point at which whole mass is concentrated and that point the whole object is balanced on that point so these are the common example of center of mass next question what are kinematical equation of motion so kinematical equation are valid if the motion in a straight line with constant acceleration or motion which is in linear linear motion so that motion so the equations are v is equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus 1/2 at square v square is equal to u square plus twice s and important fourth one that is s is equal to u plus v into t divided by 2 so all these equations are called as kinematical equations and these kinematical equations are valid in a straight line motion or linear motion so linear in straight line body which is moving along a one line or one axis only so that is called as linear motion so therefore u is equal to initial linear velocity v is equal to final linear velocity s is equal to initial displacement a is equal to linear acceleration and t is time so therefore the linear velocity is equal to displacement upon time or is also called as ds upon dt means within very small interval of time displacement is suppose very small displacement that is ds is ds upon dt means linear velocity is rate of change of displacement linear velocity means rate of change of displacement similarly linear acceleration is velocity upon time which is equal to dv by dt means within very short interval of time the velocity component is dv so therefore linear acceleration is also defined as rate of change of linear velocity now next point
so do you know real and pseudo forces their origin and applications so real and pseudo force so real force is the force arises due to the actual interaction between the objects so this force is called as real force actual interaction arises so that force is called as real force the force arises due to the actual interaction between objects is called as real force for example gravitational force frictional force so these are the examples of real force so gravitational force let us discuss one example of gravitational force a ball thrown off returns back to the earth due to the gravitational force if you throw a ball up so then that ball after a certain time it come back to the earth so why this happens because of gravitational force so what is gravitational force the f you know that so that gravitational force that is the force between all objects in in universe attracts each other this force of attraction between objects is called as gravitational force and f which is equal to g capital g small m into capital m divided by r square so this is the formula of gravitational force so this force which is exist in the universe so therefore this force is called as gravitational force and another force that is frictional force the frictional force refers to the force generates by the two surface that contains or that contact and slide against each other so this force is exist when any two body which are in contact with each other and when we slide that so then that force is exist that is actual interaction is there and this force is called as real force let us consider one example a basketball rolling on a court comes to the rest after some time so this is one of the example after certain time so then that ball is rest why that ball is rest because of frictional force between the ball and the surface of the court so these are the uh, this are the examples of real force next uh, point that is pseudo force pseudo force are not a result of any actual interaction it is not any actual interaction is not there in between two objects so this force is called as pseudo force the force or pseudo force are not a result of any actual interaction between object for example the force experienced by a person when a vehicle takes a sudden turn so let us discuss the example here suppose you are driving a car and you take left turn while you are taking left turn so then you feel like someone has pushed you towards right if you are taking left turn you push in the right side so that force you feel so that is the pseudo force acting on you so that's why that force is called as pseudo force means a force or pseudo force is acting towards right so while you are taking left turn so that pseudo force is right side while you are taking right while you are turning right side so then that pseudo force is on left side so that opposite to the turn so that is called as pseudo force or it's also called as imaginary force next point introduction in introduction we are classifying the circular motion 
and rotational motion so we know that circular motion means the motion of an particle along the circumference of a circle that is circular motion so it is a motion of an object along the circumference of a circle about any point outside that object or about any other object so any other object so this point is outside the object so this is called as circular motion and the body which is along the circumference of the circle so this motion is a circular motion now rotational motion let us consider the example of rotation of the earth along the axis of rotation so this is the motion of an object about an axis passing through the center or about an axis passing through the object itself is called as rotational motion so here so this is the classification circular motion and rotational motion so means here the particle which is performing circular motion about an circumference of the circle and that point is outside that point outside the object but here the axis of rotation passing through the itself and that body which is spinning about that axis next point that is characteristics of circular motion so there are two main important points to be remember the first point it is an accelerated motion is circular motion it is an accelerated motion let us discuss the path of circular motion so this let us consider this is this is a path of circular motion the particle performing circular motion so this is a path so a b c d are the points or position of a particle at all points we know that if particle is performing circular motion or that particle has some velocity that velocity is a vector quantity it has both magnitude as well as direction if you consider the particle starting from a point and the velocity component or direction of velocity if you have to find at that point just you have to draw the tangent at that point you will get the direction at that point means at a point the velocity direction is horizontal and towards right side at point b the velocity direction direction of velocity that is upward similarly at point c the velocity at point c which is horizontal and left side similarly at d point the velocity which is vertically downward means all these four points the velocity direction direction of velocity it changes so direction of velocity continuously changes if you consider th this point here again you draw the tangent again you will get the another direction means direction is continuously changes means the velocity component is not constant so velocity changes continuously if the body velocity is changes continuously then that body is said to be acceler accelerated body or that motion is said to be accelerated motion so means in circular motion the direction of velocity component changes with respect to time so therefore it is an accelerated motion so this is first point the velocity continuously changes with respect to time so therefore this circular motion is an accelerated motion second point it is periodic motion see that so this path so while performing circular motion the path which is repeats after equal interval of time or path which is 
repeats so this is called as periodic motion so means path is periodic motion so therefore in circular motion the particle repeats its path along same tra trajectory so therefore it's a periodic motion so this path which is repeats its trajectory repeats itself after it after certain time so therefore this is called as periodic motion circular motion is a periodic motion and accelerated motion so these two points to be remember next point we will discuss next part thanks for watching this video keep watching the video please like share and subscribe our channel